From Islam to Christ, the amazing testimony of Fauzi Arzuni. Um, that's the title of the video and I'm interested to see what is the journey that will be told by this guy Fauzi Arzuni. Without further ado, let's watch. How did I become a follower of Islam Masih? My journey is essentially a journey from religion to redemption. I would characterize my journey in the faith, in this process of becoming a follower of Esal Masih, as a journey from ritual to reconciliation. And this is very important because I was raised in the precepts of the religion of Islam. I grew up embracing Islam with all of my heart, as best as a child could in a Muslim home, having grown up in Senegal, West Africa, of a Lebanese family, a Shia Muslim, and okay, so his background is Shia Muslim. From he live in Senegal. Is there a big society of Shia there? But he says he's Lebanese, right? So I think the Lebanon Lebanese part is the Shia part that somehow. He, the family maybe go to Senegal. I assume Senegal is a Sunni country because I think the biggest um, you know group of or demography in terms of uh, Shia is in Iran, Iraq, and in the area, right? Okay. And uh, following best as we could the precepts of the Quran and the Hadith, our home was characterized by uh, religion in every sense of the word. So, why? would I need anything more than what we had? I never felt the need to have more. Until the crises of life that I experienced and that all of us experience at one point or another may bring us to face to face or do bring us actually face to face with some of the great questions of life. Who am I? Why was I born? What is the sense? What is the meaning of my existence? Wait, is he saying that even though he mentioned earlier uh, his his life is Islam or religion in the every sense of the word, uh, something like that. And then he never come across and answer the question, "Who am I? Why am I here?" etc. Right? That's bizarre for me. That's bizarre because that's the first question that you answer as a Muslim. Right? W because you are a Muslim because you understand. Where you come from, why you are why you are created, what's your purpose, etc. Otherwise, you, you know, if you are truly Muslim, you wouldn't be a Muslim without answering that question first. Of course, I know in the reality many became you know just a Muslim because of being born in a Muslim culture, etc., etc. I understand that, but because the way he described earlier to emphasize that you know the whole life is Islam, and yet. Because if he says it's culturally Islam, uh, yeah, culturally Muslim, etc., I can understand. But the way he emphasized that, and then suddenly says that, not having those questions answered, to me is just just bizarre. Uh, why these problems? Why do we have these struggles? That's the nature of the human heart, to struggle with answers and to look to the mercy of God to say, Lord, why? Lord, why? Was it that when I was just a little child, my parents experienced divorce and we had a broken home? Uh, why did we go through struggles in the context in which I grew up, where someone from my background would despise a black man? Wait, what? How is that Islamic at all? Or what kind of Islam he was brought up with? Because he said, with my background, I have a problem with black guy. What? Because Islam and racism, you know, if you combine it together, it becomes an, an, an oxymoron, right? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Uh, so, because this makes me question his earlier premise that, you know, the whole life is really Islam. And then suddenly, if, because if this is the, the narrative, then what he thought was Islam... It's not really Islam in the first place because if it, if he still see the the, the background, his family etc. being racist etc. 
then that's that's maybe cultural f that they get from somewhere and why though we were all supposed to be muslims we were not getting along i came hmm i'm not sure whether he is referring to sunni shia issue or somehow his society is like even though they are so called muslim but they are not united i don't know very early to the understanding that even with all of the noble talk we had about Allah and about religion in the home, all of that did not shut the door to the misery and the havoc that sin brings into a family and into a young life. So he talked about sin. So what's the... Uh, I'm not sure whether he's talking here when he mentioned sin is from the Christian perspective or it's actually like, a, you know, normal anyone would see that sinful life because if that is the case then what about his his earlier statement about you know the whole life is really islam from every sense of it it doesn't really make sense i experienced all of this and then i embarked on the task of reforming my life thinking that all that i had experienced all of the bad things that i went through had been because i was not walking like a muslim should and I began to reform my life by being more careful, reading the Quran, trying to keep the traditions, of course, ritual and everything else that was required. But you know what happened to me? So meaning before that, even though he's really Islam, all the life is really Islam, but still lacking of observing the compulsory things, etc. Right? I'm not sure, is it just me having because I, I really like to understand people's story but when the people's story come across like wh how to make sense of the, the pieces of the puzzle that he, he, he puts out <laughs> the more I embrace this the more I tried the more I began to discover that something simply was not gelling something was not working was the problem just me was it that I wasn't doing it right I began to look at others I began to look at anyone who called himself a Muslim whether he called himself a fundamentalist or he called himself a failure. From one F to the other, I looked at the whole gamut of Muslims and every type possible and I noticed the same thing in their life that was in my life. That there was no assurance of the forgiveness of sin. That there was fundamentally no peace, although we constantly spoke of peace. Okay, no, no assurance of, of forgiveness, I think. I think that's alludes to the difference between Christianity and Islam in the sense that uh, you are guaranteed right? you are saved uh, meaning you know for sure for a fact right so that's of course but then the second one about peace I'm not sure which because y you can travel all around the world and you can see like the life of Muslim if you if you ask revert that um, revert to Islam due to being exposed to Muslim life, Muslim family life, etc. So, I, my honest thought is perhaps he comes from a region where, you know, it's 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 where that is somehow non-existent. That honestly, in my heart as well as the heart of my Muslim friends, then. Though we said five times a day and a thousand times in other occasions, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, we were never very sure that Allah was on our side. We did not know what he decreed for us. Maybe what? What kind of Muslim society he lives in? That's weird. Maybe he decreed evil for us. Maybe he decreed good for us. We did not know. <laughs> we had Seriously? Hmm. I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's just bizarre. Uh, perhaps, yeah, you know, because I can, I do not want to assume people make up stuff and stories. But if all of this is true, right? These individuals that have this kind of story must have been living in a society, so-called Muslim society, that is so weird and bizarre and far from the teaching of Islam. I had no assurance of anything. And in that context, struggle, the struggle to, to, to reform one's life.
became a lonely one, an arduous one, a difficult one, at which not only I failed, but honestly, all the Muslims I knew were failing at it. We all know how to have a nice facade of religiosity and speak eloquently to issues if we have to. But the truth of the matter is that Allah sees our hearts and He saw mine and I looked at my heart and I knew that I was not finding the answer in religion as such. But what is there more than the deen? What is there more than an iman, iman? What is there that I needed that would take me to the next level, to the next step? I did not know. Where would I turn? What Isa al-Masih came to put before us was not just a set of rules or laws or things that we can bring forth as meritorious deeds such as whether it's we call it prayer or giving alms or anything else he came to teach us that beyond religion we needed relationship and relationship cannot happen between us and Allah to be in the true peace and the true Islam and the true Salam we cannot have that without there being first a reconciliation this is what is taught to have reconciliation reconciled in the heart this is what I learned through the message of Isha al-Masih that someone shared with me. That person, in fact, the first time that that person talked to me, I, I was very angry with that person. So the way he tell this story, either for whatever reason, the Islam that he, 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 he learned from small is missing the, the, the internal aspect, right? Because what he said, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to think, how can some Muslim... Well, I know why some Muslim never come across this. Uh, I, you know, okay, this is a bigger, broader topic, I would say. Because in society, there are so-called Muslim parents that are not really understanding Islam. And then, they, of course, they brought up, brought up their kids, their children, etc. So, yeah, I have come across uh, this, this uh, you know, teenage uh, students, etc., that even though they think they are Muslim, but when we go into the Quran, into the Hadith, into the teaching of Islam, into how how you know how we see things, our perspective, our worldview, etc., it's, it seems like they they learning something totally new, which is interesting for me. And of course, if you are Muslim and you are aware of this as well, that's the unfortunate state of the Ummah, which we really really have to you know do something we have to do something otherwise we we i don't know whether we can answer in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have done our job right so that's one one part of it but the way he's telling this is because it seems like he's searching but for anyone who's searching normally it's easy to find because you know it's bizarre to see that no you know Wherever you turn, no Muslim actually represents the true Islam. So that's, I mean... I'm saying, do not talk to me about such religious issues. Uh, uh, who are you? And, and that's when I learned that there's a great deal of difference between those who would say that they are following the Bible and those who are true followers of Isa al-Masih. The man talking to me was a true follower of Isa al-Masih. I remember the first time... So he actually differentiated as well between following the Bible and following... Isa al-Masih or Jesus the Messiah okay so perhaps from his perspective religion itself is a problem and that I heard someone give a khutbah about the Injil and the man that was preaching that word I shall never forget how he held up that book the Bible that comprises all of the holy revelations of Allah from the Torah to the Injil and began to say Allah is the one who gives promises and keeps them and he is the one who assures us that we can count on what he says that was a comforting word for me because he was saying that there are things that allah says that cannot be simply trifled with that give actually reassurance for i grew up in a system where i was never sure if allah was truly for me i was wait what so when he when he heard that about the bible so no one have ever said something in that sense about the Quran. So what, what, what is Quran to him from the beginning? Because there's a word from God that he, etc. What he said, right? I mean, <laughs> so the Quran was never presented to him by Muslim as such. 
which planet he is living in. Stop that Allah is closer to me than my jugular vein. But when I went to the Quran to read that, I found out that this is not speaking about a tender, loving nearness to me, but that it was a warning to those who actually were not being obedient. So I was in fear rather than at peace that day. Uh, okay, so he's not peaceful because they are warning about those who disobedient and disobey God. Okay. So, f trying to diagnose here. So he he feel peace or at peace if there's a religion that says, instead of a religion that says you shouldn't disobey God, you should obey God. Disobedient and disobey God, there's punishment. Beware of it. This is not giving him peace, but God loves everyone. If you are sinful, etc., etc., no matter. God still loves you. So I guess that's the longing that they have. Not really about you know worshiping God, serving God, finding the true God. It's more of but you know why God want to punish disobedient? I, I guess that's that's the that's the core of the issue, I guess. Among the promises that I heard was the one that is given to us in the book of Acts, in the fourth chapter, that says to us, That is, there is nothing, no other name under heaven and upon this earth that has been given whereby we can be saved. But that if we believe, He will forgive us. That He is the one who did give his life as a ransom, the sacrifice that Allah provided. That belief. So, I, I'm not sure whether I'm just a different type of person that seems to be logical when I approach something. Because, yeah, I, I, I can see his l longing and that serve his, his, you know, desire and it match. And he said, oh, I'm at peace with this. For me, before, because anyone who bring up promises, that even how good that promise is my first question is okay is this a valid promise because you know in this world even you know people say you know invest in this this thing it is guaranteed giving you this amount of meaning okay but is there any you know valid is this a valid or is this a scam because if something give like ri ridiculously good promises but it is a scam it is still a scam you, you shouldn't be at peace with the scam just because it promises you to give you what you want, right? So that's how I, I see it. Pierced my heart. It wasn't something I was looking for. I wasn't thinking. And thank God, this was not an invitation for me, so to speak, to switch religions. That's not what it's about. It's not about religion. It's about reconciliation. This is the message of the gospel of the Injil. This is what uh, Isa al-Masih brings us, reconciliation. So today, to anyone who listens to me, he said, "Is it? It is in Acts, right? Just now. Is that the gospel? Isn't gospel like uh, Matthew, Luke? What's the the two? John? I don't remember the four. He said that is from Acts. Right? That's not that's not the gospel, right? I want to testify that indeed the Injil is true when it tells us, La ilaha illallah." So he said that just for those who don't understand Arabic, La ilaha illallah. That's the same as the first part of the Shahada. If you want to proclaim to become a Muslim, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that La ilaha illallah. There's no none worthy of worship, no God except Allah. Bayna wa bayna Allah illa isal insan, isal Masih al insan. That is, there is no God but one God. And there is no mediator between man and God except Jesus Christ, the man. And so, wait, let, let me. They know verify that indeed the Injil is true when it tells us, La ilaha illallah. So, La ilaha illallah. Well, La fi ghair wa fi. They know they Allah. Illa isa al insan. That's interesting because. If that is the actual phrase, it is not any different than Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you know, wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Because Rasul is the messenger that connects, you know, the revelation 
the teachings, the commandments, etc. from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us to, 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 to get the revelation, right? So, there's no connection between when he said, La ilaha illallah, you know, there's none worthy of worship except Allah and there's no connection from us except with uh, Isa al-Masih, the human, al-insan, the human. It's just because if that is what is being teach or taught by Jesus back then, yeah, of course, right? You have to believe only one God, none other than Allah, and we have to accept Jesus or Isa al-Masih as the, the, the messenger, as the Rasul, as the one that connects us to God. Because we cannot know what God teach us commandment for us etc except through the messenger the the connection to god yeah we accept it of course you know he is jesus he is the messenger at his time moses is the messenger uh, and in that time so if you take the concept the shahada for the people at that time ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna for us ashhadu anna muhammad because that's the final messenger uh, for them isa or Moses, musa musa Rasulullah. It's, it's the same, right? Isa al-Masih al-Insa. That is, there is no God but one God. And there is no mediator between man and God except Jesus Christ, the man. Yeah. Why don't Christians believe that? There's no none other word to be worshipped, no God except Allah. And there's no, you know, mediator the you know the connection except with with the the messenger so if you live in the time of musa musa is the messenger isa isa the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam muhammad is the messenger and all the prophets and messenger alayhi, alayhi salam and so that is something today that i want to assure any hearer that if in faith believing one accepts what the Injil says, you find the solution. My life was transformed by the truth. What I could not find just through the precepts of religion, and it doesn't matter how you call that religion, it could have been any religion. What I could not find through the precepts of religion, I found through ransom, redemption, in the name of Isa al-Masih, I found reconciliation with God that transformed my life and gave me true peace. That is why I want to follow Isa al-Masih, and why I continue to follow Isa al-Masih. And why I proclaim to anyone, please be reconciled with God in the name of Isa Masih and be a follower of His. Yeah, Muslim would say we follow all the prophets and messenger. Right, the examples we follow, the Sharia, the Sharia is based on the Sharia of the messenger of the time. Right, if I was born in the time of Jesus, obviously I have to follow the, the commandment, the Sharia of that time. If in the time of Moses. At the time, in the time of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Sharia of that time. But do we follow all the prophets and messenger in terms of their mission, in terms of their attributes, in terms of their you know character, etc.? Yes, obviously. In terms of the Sharia, based on the messenger, each messenger on the time. So what he verbalized in terms of you know worship on on one God and follow the messenger in this case, uh, Injil from uh, Isa. No problem, no problem. But because he he never mentioned about I don't know worshiping Jesus here, uh, salvation through the death of Jesus. He he never mentioned any of those. So I don't see fundamental issues with what he says, except for how come he never meaning what I don't know was not. He, he, didn't he learn about, you know, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam as the messenger as well, etc. Because the, 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 whatever he said, whatever he said about uh, Isa alayhi salam in that context is exactly the same as Muhammad Wasallam bring in that context as well. So it's quite bizarre. It's unfortunately perhaps lack of real Islamic education in his young life. Perhaps that's why he think, you know, what he have. But he have from Shia background, so perhaps there are something that I don't even understand in the teaching of Shia that triggered, you know, rightly, rightfully so, perhaps, I don't know. What do you think? Um, 
yeah so that's my comment uh, interesting uh, thank you for watching see you next time